Hey guys, it's Dave the Software Dev again, and I'm going to start a new series here today uh, about making uh, some video games with JavaScript and the HTML canvas element. Uh, I'm just going to dive right into it. Uh, the game we're going to make is going to be uh, the snake game. I'm sure you've played it, where you've got uh, a little snake thing that runs around on the screen, and you've got to eat these little food pieces that appear, and every time you eat one, your snake character gets larger uh, and then if you run into the wall or if you run back into your snake then you lose as you move around. Um, it's an old game. It used to be in DOS. It was called Nibbles and uh, and I, I played it a lot when I was younger so uh, I'm gonna make one here with uh, JavaScript and HTML. So in this first video what I intend to show you is how to load uh, image resources in a in a way that will work with the cache uh, we're going to initialize our tile grid because our screen is going to be composed of a grid of tiles. And then lastly, we're actually going to draw something uh, on the canvas. So what we have here is a simple HTML file. I've got, uh, in the header, I've got a link to a style sheet, uh, which if I open that style sheet up, it doesn't really have a lot in it, and it won't. All it does is set the background color to, uh, to sort of a dark gray kind of color. <laughs> I've also got a canvas element uh, inside of my body, and that's where we're going to be working on, uh, or drawing rather, our uh, game. So I've called it game screen. I've given it a width of 800 and a height of 600. So we're going to put all of our JavaScript into uh, some separate files. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and include uh, one of them now. Okay, I went ahead and included all of the JavaScript files that we're going to be writing. Uh, I like to sort of break some things up into, into different sections, and I'll show you what the code looks like in a bit. So we have three files here, the snake.js, which is going to be sort of our main uh, snake file, and snake grid, which is going to contain all functions related to the tile grid, and then snake images, which is going to be responsible for handling all of our images in the game. So let's start out with snake.js. Uh, I like to contain everything uh, in my JavaScript. So the first thing we're going to do is create sort of a, a namespace, if you will. So what that'll do is that will uh, basically create a variable called snake and set it to snake if it already exists. Otherwise, it'll set it to uh, an empty um, dictionary. And we're going to be putting all of our different um, functions and variables inside of this snake object. The reason uh, you may have seen this pattern before, this allows us to use this snake object uh, between multiple files, and whichever one gets loaded first, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it will uh, it'll populate that snake object as it loads the files. So first thing we're going to do is uh, this is our snake.js file. We're going to uh, define some elements about our grid here. Okay, so I've added a variable to my snake object called grid types, and that's going to be uh, sort of a dictionary of constants uh, where we have a floor equal to zero, wall equal to one, snake two, and food three. So we can use that to, uh, to reference the different tiles that we're going to have. Also, I've initialized an empty grid array. I'll show you how that works in a bit. And I've initialized uh, an empty uh, array of images. So our first function here is snake.init, and it's going to be responsible for loading all of the images and uh, creating our game grid. So let's get to work loading up images. Okay, so I populated out my init, init function here. It takes uh, an ID of the canvas element. Uh, we'll be passing that in from our main index file. Uh, which level you want to load. Right now that doesn't really have any bearing. Uh, that'll start to have some bearing in later videos in this series, so I'm not using the level variable just yet. And secondly, a callback to execute whenever all of the images have completed loading. And I'll show you what that does in a little bit. So if you've never used HTML canvas, uh, the canvas element is uh, again in this uh, index.html, we, we called it game screen. This is the, the object that we will actually be drawing everything on uh, within our HTML file. So what this does, uh, we're going to pass in, sorry, we're going to pass in this ID of game screen when we call the init function. And then this will basically just get grab the canvas and pull out the context from that canvas element and store them. 
the context is what we will be using to uh, to draw everything. So it's a member of the uh, of the canvas element object. You call you get it by calling the get context, and we're going to be drawing in two D. Uh, I've got a function here for load images that we're about to write, and then lastly, it will wait for all of the images to complete loading, and it'll call the callback when that's done. So this is important because uh, the images could be cached or they could not be cached. We don't really know. Uh, if it's the first time the user accesses it, you don't want to have a problem where your your images have not already loaded. So now I'm working in my snake images JS file, which I'm loading in here for JS uh, snake images. Go back to it. I don't have anything in there yet, but the first thing we're going to have is we're going to again get our namespace. It may or may not exist. Uh, if it does, it'll pull it back. If not, it'll create it. And then as the further files are processed, it'll it'll add to them. But the first function we're going to write is going to be that load images function here. Okay, here's our load images function. And as you can see, for each one of our grid types, which we defined in snake.js, floor, wall, snake, and food, we actually pull in an image file for those guys. So I've got some image files created here. I've just got some basic ones that I created. Floor is, is made to sort of look like grass. Uh, the food is just this little yellow thing. Uh, our, our snake's going to be just a little green ball. And then the wall is a, a little brick image that I made with, uh, with GIMP. Anyways, here in this function, we're going to load all those images in. And we're putting them into a new array. The first element of that array is the actual image file. And then the second element is going to be the, uh, the actual image object once it's loaded in. We can reference it there. So the, the next thing it does is it adds a variable to the namespace called images loaded, and it sets that to zero. So as these images are loaded in, there's a callback that's going to be executed that will increment that number. And then once all of our images are, once that number, images loaded, equals the number in image files, which in this case is four, then we'll know that all of our images have been loaded and we can continue on with the, uh, the execution of the game. So the idea here is to preload all of our images and store them in this image files array. I then loop through each of my image files and I grab uh, the very first, um, I grab the record out of the dictionary that corresponds to the one I'm loading. So this is going to loop from zero to three. And then for that one, I set the second element to a new image object. That would be these guys here, the null. And then I set the source to the file. And then I add a callback for the onload, which is going to be snake .image on image loaded. So let's go ahead and write that. What this is going to do is once the image has been downloaded from the server, it's going to call this on image loaded function. And all I'm going to do is increment the number of images that I've loaded. That's all that I want my uh, on image loaded to do. Now, if you'll notice back here, we call a wait for images uh, function with a uh, with a callback to execute once that's done. So let's do let's write that code now inside of my snake images. Okay, so here's our snake dot wait for images function. It's called from uh, the main uh, init function here. Basically, snake.loadImages populates the image uh, images that we want to pull, and then snake.waitForImages waits until they have done have, have completed rather downloading, and then uh, we pass in a callback for that. So let's look at this code. Uh, what we're doing is setting a window timeout here uh, that's going to execute. Yeah, I don't know if it's a separate thread in the browser, but it acts like a separate thread. It'll uh, it'll execute at while your images are downloading, and every time it runs, it checks to see if the number of images loaded, which we increment every time one is completed, is uh, is not equal to the uh, the length of the number of images that we have to load. If it's not equal to that, then we want to continue waiting, and it just basically calls itself again. Uh, with a 10 millisecond delay. So that's going to wait until all of the images have completed loading. Now once your number of images loaded is equal to the length, then it calls our callback function that we pass in. 
which in this case is our loading complete callback, which is a parameter of our init function. Okay, so in order to watch it download the images, I'm going to go back to my index file, and I'm going to put a, a script in here. Okay, so I've written two functions here. One is a sort of a stub for our main game loop uh, that basically is just going to tell me that, hey, I've loaded in everything, just with an alert there. Secondly, uh, I've actually called our init function. I've given it the ID of the canvas element that we're going to use. I'm passing in zero right now for a level because we're not really using levels quite yet. We will do that in subsequent videos. And I have here, uh, that's the callback that's going to be executed, which is this window.gameloop function when uh, my images are done loading. So to give you an example, let's pull up the web browser. And I've already ran this once to verify it worked. If I, if I refresh, you can see I got my loaded there, and also that it downloaded these four images. But if you look, it says they are from cache, right? So I want to actually go to my history, and I'm going to clear my cache. If I refresh now, I get my loaded message. But this would be where it actually would have downloaded them from the server, uh, as, opposed to, uh, as opposed to the cache. Every time, every subsequent load now, it's going to be from cache. But uh, you, you know, you can try to uh, try to use those uh, images without having this wait for completion, as I have here. Uh, I've always had problems with it, so I found the best thing to do is to write a function uh, that waits until the, all of the images have completed loading, and uh, and then goes from there. I'll show this to you again in this video um, after we have uh, shown something on the screen, and I'll show you the problem. Okay, so we've got our image resources loaded in. Let's initialize our tile grid. So I'm back on my snake.js uh, init function. We're going to add a function to snake. a call rather to snake.loadgrid. So let's save that. Now we need to write this load grid function. And I'm going to put that in my snake grid JavaScript file. And basically what I want this uh, function to do is to um, load in the tiles for a given level. Uh, to begin with, we're, we're not going to really have levels, but I'll show you levels in our, in our next video. Okay, so here's our load grid function. Uh, we have our canvas set to 800 by 600, so I set my grid width to 20 and my grid height to 15, uh, which gives us a 20 by 15 grid of 40 by 40 pixels for each tile. And that's what I also have uh, those images that I showed you earlier. And you notice they were really low resolution. That's because they were 40 by 40 tiles. So uh, it initializes that grid width and grid height and stores that in my snake object. And it's, it basically, this function, or sorry, this, these two lines of code here will help us in the future as we're drawing because they basically tell um, snake how, what's the width and the height of each individual tile. Now I know it's 40 by 40 because I, uh, I calculated that out, but if I was to change my grid width and height here, I wouldn't want to have to go change that uh, everywhere I use it. So I, I set the grid element width and the grid element height to basically the width divided by the grid width, the height divided by the grid height. So 800 divided by 20 is 40 and 600 divided by 15 is also 40. So lastly, uh, I basically initialize a grid. I loop through my grid width and grid height of 20 by 15, and I drop on there uh, 20, uh, that number of grid items, which I'm going to write next, which have a type of floor. So let's write, uh, let's write that function here. Uh, a grid item is going to represent a single tile in my tile engine. So here is my grid item function. Uh, you know, since I'm initializing a new one of these every time I use it, I'll just refer to this as a class. I'm using it similar to a class uh, from other languages. It'll create a new instance of what this function returns. So the first thing we do is we keep track of what the this object is, and that's because this can change based upon where you're calling in JavaScript. Uh, so it's pretty pretty common practice. To, uh, to keep track of that inside of your classes. Now these four, uh, four uh, fields within this object, uh, the first one 
uh, there's some explanation related to that redraw. So when you're when you're building a game, especially a 2D game that's a tile engine, you don't want to draw the entire grid every single loop. Uh, you only want to draw the parts that uh, that need to be drawn. Uh, that way, you know your game will actually run at a higher frame rate. Uh, it won't require as much CPU usage and memory per frame, etc. So this dot, this dot redraw basically tells this particular tile if it needs to draw itself to the screen, and it defaults to true. Second, I keep track of the X and Y position of this tile, which I pass in as I'm creating them, and I keep track of the type of the tile, which is going to be floor. Next, there's a function here where we actually get to draw something, and it's going to take the context object, which is, uh, if you remember, from snake.js, we keep track of the context here, and I'm going to be writing the code to actually cause this function in a bit. The context actually offers us those drawing functions that we're going to be using on the canvas. Um, so for instance, uh, let's just look through this code. If this particular tile needs to redraw, then you need to get the image that corresponds to the type. So I'm passing in snake.gridtypes.floor. Well, it's saying give me snake image files of this type, which if we go to images, image files of floor is right here. And then it says, give me the first element, it's actually the second, but it's a one index. And that's going to return back that image object that we created while we were loading in the images. So that's how it actually grabs that image. Keeps track of the image, and then it actually calls our little draw image function, which is offered to us by the uh, HTML canvas. First thing you pass in is the image itself. These are the source coordinates that you want to draw. This is called blitting, by the way. Uh, if you uh, have ever done any other languages and drawn to the screen, uh, you're you're basically copying an image onto um, another image. In this case, you're copying the image to the canvas. So you have to tell it what are your source copy rectangles. So if I pull up my image here, wall.png, this will be 0, 0 on the wall, and this would be 40, 40, because it's a 40 by 40 image. So if I was to say 0, 20, then what I would actually be drawing would be half of this image, you know, 0, 0, 0 by 20, 20, if that's what I passed in. That's not what I'm passing in. I'm passing in the full image width and the full image height, but you can draw just portions of an image if you wanted to. So we're going to be drawing the 00, zero to 4040, which gives us the entire, uh, the entire wall image. So next are the next two variables are where you want to draw them. Next two parameters, I should say, are where you actually want to draw on the canvas object. So we're going to be drawing self.x times that grid element width that I calculated up here. So for instance, self.x might be 0, 0. That's the grid coordinates of this particular tile. Uh, but I want to actually draw on the, well, let me not use 0, 0. That's a bad example. Uh, let's say my, my tile location is 1, 1. Okay, but when I draw it on the screen, it's not going to be at pixel 1, 1, x, y. It's going to be at tile position 1, 1, which would correspond to 40, x, 40, y, right? So what this does is this, uh, where we multiply the tile position, self.x, times the width of each tile, and we multiply the, uh, the same thing for y, the tile y, times the width of, or the height of each tile. Now the last thing that we give it is uh, when you're drawing to the canvas, what width do you want to draw um, the tile image to? Uh, you could take this 4040 image and you could draw it on 8080, you know, which would basically scale it out to twice its size if you wanted to. We're not going to do that, so I pass in the grid element width, which in this case is 40, and the grid element height, which in this case is 40. Uh, you know, that's a little bit of a, a rambling explanation of the draw image function, and I apologize for that, but that's a very well-documented function. You can look it up in the, in the context, and uh, you can see exactly what you need to pass in for that. Lastly, after we've drawn this image, 
uh, we tell it that we don't want to don't want it to draw again on the next loop because it hasn't been uh, written over. Okay, so let's draw the function that's actually going to draw our tile grid. Maybe that'll help pull some of this together for you in case you're confused. So inside of my snake grid, I'm going to create a snake.drawgrid function. And I'm going to basically loop through my tiles and draw each one of them. So that's as simple as it could possibly be. I'm looping through each tile in the grid and I'm telling that tile to draw itself. Okay, so now I've actually got to use that draw grid function. And I'm going to put that here in the window.game loop function. This will be the main uh, window that's used, or the main function rather, that loops continuously and actually executes the drawing and game logic. So this function is first called uh, once our images have loaded. You remember it was a callback. I removed that alert that said loaded, and I put in there uh, a, just a call to draw our grid, and then a set timeout back to itself uh, to execute uh, as many times as it can with uh, with a zero interval. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, at the actual uh, file now. I'm just going to reload my index.html, and then so there is our tile grid that's being uh, created. It's all uh, the floor which I called it floor but it's going to be grass really I guess in this as you can see those tiles are repeating so let's uh, let's examine this a little bit if I pull up my uh, code editor the snake dot draw grid function is being called but let's load in our snake grid and actually look at what's happening here so I, I paused it and immediately got called right so it's calling this draw for each element in the tile, or for each tile in the grid, I should say. If I put a, a break right here, here's where the tile decides if it should redraw, but if I try to break anywhere inside of that, you know, these tiles, they only have ever really drawn themselves once to the screen. Uh, and that's where I was getting at where you can greatly improve your frame rate. If I was redrawing every one of these tiles every time, you know, that would be a problem. So I'm actually going to reload this page and we can watch the tiles as they draw themselves. I'm going to reload. So redraw defaults to true. And as you can see here, we're, we're drawing the first one in the element, which is the first one in the grid, which is going to be zero, uh, zero are the coordinates. And then the width is 40 and 40, which I uh, mentioned uh, while I was going over this function. So if I step over that, there's our first tile being drawn. If I continue stepping, you can see where it's calling draw on the next tile. And there's the next tile being drawn. And then the third, etc., etc., etc. So you can see how it's actually building up our tile in case you've never uh, created a tile engine like that. And that's how that actually operates. So the last thing I want to show you for this video is uh, the issue of the cached images. Um, so I'm actually going to change my code a little bit. If I go back to uh, snake images here, and we're not going to wait for those images to load. And that's not in snake images, it's actually right here. So rather than calling snake.wait for images, we're just going to say, uh, hey, we're done. We're going to call that uh, that loading complete callback without that. So I'm going to refresh that. Now, remember, if you look at the network traffic going on here, this is all good because I refreshed, no problems, because this is pulling from cache. But let me clear out that cache, and you'll see the issue. If I go to my history, I'm going to clear, clear my browsing data. Now, when I refresh that, there's no error. It's running, right? But we didn't wait for those images to load. And here, you can, if I put a breakpoint, self.redraw, that's good stuff. I mean, it's just not it's just not doing it because we did not wait for our images to load. Now, if I refresh here, where it's going to pull those images from the cache, ah, there it works, you know. So that's why you need to wait for your images to complete loading. Okay, this has been uh, probably one of my longest videos ever. Um, I hope uh, that we got a good foundation going. You're, it's going to get a lot more fun with uh, with some of the next videos. Uh, I'm going to put all these up, so uh, just jump on to the next one, 
and uh, please uh, like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be doing some, uh, some additional games in the future.